Start by taking a long shank nymph hook and putting an appropriate size bead head on it. An easy way of doing this is put the bead in the palm of your hand. Make sure the small end is positioned up and then simply thread the hook through the bead. Now place the hook with the bead in your vise and secure it. So I was using a barbless fire hole sticks number 609, but you can use any 1x to 2x long shank nymph hook like this Daiichi 1710. Now I like to add a few wraps of lead to stabilize the bead and give the fly a little extra weight. After you wrap the desired amount of lead on, then push it up into the bead to stabilize it. Start your thread just behind the lead wraps and then wrap up into the lead and back down a few times to keep it positioned. Then bring your thread down to the start of the bend of the hook. Now we're going to want to add some wire. In this case I'm using small sized gold wire. When tying this in, make sure it's on the side of the hook facing you and the tip extends to just shy the lead wraps. Tying it in this way helps build an even taper on the fly and also positions the wire to where it will not interfere with your tail. You'll see what I mean later on. Now we're going to need some pheasant tail. These come in a wide variety of colors, and more than what I'm just showing here. Today though, I'm going to use brown. Most pheasant tail fibers have two sides. A limp and webby side like this, and a stiffer side like these fibers. We want the stiff fibers. Select a half dozen or so fibers, and align the tips by stroking them out straight. When the tips are aligned, then simply strip them off the feather like so. As you can see, this keeps the tips perfectly aligned. Measure out about a half hook shank length for the tail and make two loose wraps to tie it in place. Then check it, and many times I find I've tied it in too long. So if you did also, just pull the fibers rearward slightly until you're happy with the length. Then I like to make a single wrap under the tail and one tight wrap over the feathers once again. Then pull the remaining feathers rearward and make a wrap in front of them. And then pull the fibers out of the way from you on the other side and make another wrap to help keep them angled that direction. Then let's take some pearl tinsel, which is basically the same thing as flash of it. And I find the medium size is perfect for the size hook I'm using. But select the right size according to what size fly you're tying. And you don't need much of this. Tie this in on top of the hook and make sure you make one wrap right in front of the tail of the fly. Then end with your thread wraps just in front of the hook point. Now make touching wraps up the hook shank with the pheasant tail fibers, trying to keep them together. And I find placing a finger on the wrap each time will help keep them aligned straight. As you reach your thread, the thread will start to compress the pheasant tail fibers tighter. It makes a bulkier abdomen and also gives a nice taper as well. You don't have to reach all the way to the bead head with pheasant tail. Just make sure you cover at least two thirds of the hook with it. When you're happy with the abdomen, then capture the pheasant tail with a few tight wraps and trim off the waist. Now pull the flash up over the abdomen and tie down tightly. Once the flash is secure, then start making even counter wraps with the wire up the abdomen. Basically wrap the opposite direction of the pheasant tail fibers to make this fly more durable. Also try to make these wraps as even as possible. Once you reach your thread, then capture the wire. However, since we counter wrapped it, it will want to come loose on you. So if you change the direction of your thread on the capture, then change it back again, you'll tie in a secure wire. Then just helicopter the wire off clean. Pull the flash rearward and tie it down to about the one third mark from the end of the bead. Then align the tips of more pheasant tail fibers and strip them off. Now measure out a little over a third of the hook shank with the fibers and then tie that measurement down so it extends past the bead with the tips facing forward. Also tie the base of the feathers down back to about the one third mark as well. For the abdomen, we'll need some peacock curl. A single hurl will do. And then snip the delicate tip off also. As you can see, there's a longer side and a shorter side to the hurl. Tie it down so the longer side is facing you and this will give you a bushier abdomen. I tied this down too deep into the hook though. So here I am backing it off to about the one third mark. Now make touching wraps up the abdomen with your hurl until you reach the bead. Now this hurl wasn't cooperating with me, but usually this turns out really nice and even. Capture the hurl with tight wraps and then simply break it off clean. Now push the tips of the pheasant tail back with your thumbnail and wiggle your nail back and forth to separate the fibers in the center. 
When they're separated a bit, then pull the butt end of the fibers up and over the abdomen, splitting the tips. Then pull the tips downward and make two tight wraps to hold the butt ends down tight. Pull up the flash and tie it down with a few tight wraps as well. Then pull both up and make two wraps under them. With them pulled up tight, take the tips of your scissors and snip them off close. Now whip finish your fly. For added security, I like to paint a little head cement over the thorax and whip finish. And there we have it, the full back flashback pheasant tail. A very effective pattern for aggressive trout on a sunny day. Here is one of many fish I've caught with this fly. And the full video of this trip will come out soon. I also wanted to remind you that all the materials used today are in the description section of this video, but you might have to click the show more button to expand the section to view. I also have included links to where you can purchase them online. Also included a discount code for the fly artist as well, as a special thank you for being my subscriber. So please use that as you won't be able to find deals this good anywhere else. Well thanks for watching. If you like this sort of thing, please subscribe and share with all your fish loving friends. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.